And now for something completely different. <laughs> Everybody, welcome in to today's video. So yeah, we are doing things just a little bit differently this time. Um, I'm not in the Palin Music Studio. I'm not in the Mizaku Guitars Workshop. I'm actually comfortably at home enjoying a glass of bourbon and uh, here to talk about a project that I worked on a little while ago, actually. So the reason that we're doing things a little bit differently right now is because I don't actually have the instrument with me anymore. Um, it's already gone back to its owner. So what we had was, it was a, a Martin tipple. Um, so if you don't know what that is, basically a tipple is like a, uh, it's a, a multi-course uh, steel string ukulele is pretty much what it is. Uh, it was pretty old. We'll get into the pictures um, and I'll show you exactly uh, some more details about it and uh, how we were able to identify it and its age. But the reason that we're doing it like this now is because uh, I actually did this instrument right before I decided to start making YouTube videos. So you're going to see at the very end of the process, I actually started making some videos. But even before then, I still recognized that this was something unique and cool. So I did take some pictures. Unfortunately, not as many as I would have liked to have now, looking back. But at least I do have some photo documentation of the work that I did, as well as some video documentation later. Uh, because by the end of this, I had then decided to start making some YouTube videos. By then, it was almost already uh, completed. But it was just such a, a unique experience. Um, I'd never worked on one of these before, and the extent of the work that was done on it, uh, it was just, it was really cool. And so um, I decided I wanted to go ahead and just take what, uh, what photo documentation and videos that I had and, and still put together a video for it, um, just because it was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed it. But enough of looking at me and listening to me talk. Let's roll the tape. So this here is what was brought in to me at the store. This is a Martin Tipple. Um, I've also heard it pronounced Tiple, um, but uh, most of the time I hear it called Tipple, so that's what I'm going to go with. Um, so what this is basically is it's a, it's a ukulele type instrument. Uh, but it has 10 strings instead of four. And so what that has is uh, the two outermost strings are in courses of two, and then the two inside strings are in a course of three. So that's a total of 10 strings. And then the two uh, middle strings, uh, you actually have those, the, they're divided up into three different um, courses. The two outside courses are a smaller unwound string and then the middle string of each one of those is a larger wound string so that gives you an octave lower tone than what you have on the two outside strings in that course. So it kind of gives you the same sense of uh, when you play like a mandolin um, as far as having the strings doubled up but a little bit of uh, an extra sort of like a 12 string guitar uh, having that octave string on those two middle strings of a ukulele is kind of the it's kind of the feel that you're getting there um, also of course you get a different sound because of the strings being um, steel rather than nylon this particular model is uh, it's the t18 model um, and we know that because it has a spruce top with mahogany backs and sides. And so their, their numbering system for their model numbers for these were was very simple, very similar to the, uh, the dreadnoughts. Um, so you have, for example, the D18, that's going to be mahogany, the D28, it's going to be rosewood. They're kind of following along the same lines as that. So this is the T18. Um, the markings are clear. Uh, you can see on the, uh, the back graft right here um, that it is made by uh, Martin. Um, a closer look of it here. And then uh, an inspection of the serial number inside. You can see 
uh, we were able to date that to 1926. So this was one of the first of uh, many problems that it had was that the bridge was lifting but it was also cracked and you can see where right there where the belly starts on the back side of the bridge um, it's actually cracked pretty much all the way from one end clear to the other uh, and it's it, you can't see it from that angle but it's actually lifting uh, from that point back it, it looks like it may have been um, there was an attempt to glue it back on um, but it did come off again and so it was just kind of hanging on there like a hangnail with it cracked right along that line I was kind of surprised that it was still on there this is one of the things that I really I wished I had been able to get some better pictures of especially uh, after it was finished because um, well to be perfectly honest I was just really proud of the work I was able to do on this bridge um, I was able to glue that bridge back together in a way that uh, it was virtually impossible to to find where that glue line was unless you just absolutely knew where it was or if it was pointed out to you but the the bridge ended up being in really good shape and I was really happy with the way it turned out so this is really what the big problem with with this was you, you can see here the back is uh, completely coming undone um, basically from from around the tail the lower bout and then it goes around all the way up the waist and then pretty much comes all the way around to the heel and you can see that the binding there is all pretty much missing as well so we had to uh, replace the binding but uh, also inside there there were a lot of the braces on the back that were loose um, and that's not the only problem with the back that we had we also had several cracks here where it had dried out and cracked um, and so now here we have taken the back completely off to get to all of the problems that were inside uh, and you can see where that lower brace on the back is uh, is gone because it's been removed it's laying there on the table right next to the, the little pull saw um, so that had to be cleaned up and and re-glued uh, and of course the the binding um, that I mentioned the binding was all um, half half of it was missing and the other half was messed up pretty bad so we actually ended up just uh, replacing the binding on there once we got the back glued on uh, I missed any sort of pictures of, of that process but here we have um, I'm gluing the binding back on and I'm using my uh, my rubber bands to clamp those bindings on so we, we used rosewood bindings to match what was on there before and just glued them on and clamped them on really tight with the rubber bands and so there was a little bit of touch-up work that was going to need to be done because of all of this work and actually this is where we pick up from here on out um, this is where I got the wild idea to start making some YouTube videos and so now at this point I'm going to hand it over to me and I'm going to explain the rest of it actually on video. So now today we are actually inside the Mazako Guitars uh, workshop and we've got the tipple here, we've got the uh, the binding all replaced around here, rosewood binding, um, but there are, are a few spots where the finish needs touched up a little bit. Um, so we're here where the cracks are and then also along the edges of where uh, some of the original finish came off with the uh, installation of the new binding. So we're going to get that taken care of today. Uh, we're going to get that started by putting a little bit of tinting in some lacquer and uh, spraying that on here with, uh, with an airbrush. Some really light applications. Um, so anyway, we're going to get that started and see how that goes.
so now I'm back in the shop and I'm putting the uh, the tuners back on. Interesting story with these tuners actually. Um, these tuners were completely original and they were in really good working order except that uh, there was one issue the little screw, the retaining screw that holds on the gear, there were two of those. Out of the ten gears, there were two of those that were missing. I reached out to uh, Martin Guitar first to see if they had anything like that for a restoration work. Um, of course, they didn't have anything that old. They referred me to another guy up there in uh, New York State who runs a guitar place and he does a lot of older restorations like that. And uh, he was very helpful. Actually, what we ended up doing was packed up the tuners, sent them off to him, and then he uh, matched them and made sure that they, they worked correctly. And just because they come from the same model, because he, he had some that came off of these old T18 tipples like this, but there's still the, the manufacturing process of the hardware at that time, there was still no guarantee that it was actually going to work uh, if he just put a couple screws in a bag and sent them to us. So he actually had to fit them to the tipple itself. And so now we're just restringing the tipple back up. It's quite a process with 10 strings. You know, a, a 12 string guitar is always quite a bit more work to, to tune to, to string up than a six string guitar. And so, I mean, this here, this is a, this is a 10 string ukulele basically is, is kind of what it is. Uh, you know, I don't know if I, if I really mentioned as far as like, I say, I keep saying it's a ukulele like instrument and that's because um, of all those different courses, it is strung and tuned like a ukulele and then played like a ukulele. There are other variations of how to tune it, but that seems to be the most predominant. Uh, so here I'm actually doing a little bit of touch up on the, the ebony nut, which looked like it was in good shape, but then when I was putting the strings on, um, a couple of them actually started to slip. So I shored that up with a little bit of uh, black CA glue that I got from Stumac. They sell it in the black variety and I was able to fix that right up. final snipping of the strings to finish up the job and these brand new fresh strings of course it's hard to keep them in tune they're still stretching uh, so these first couple of little playthroughs are a little bit rough as far as the tuning stability but a bit stabilized in the end so there it is a 1926 Martin tipple all put back together and uh, it's ready to go, ready to play. This really was an unusual one and a fun one too. That's one of the fun things about uh, doing this work is you never know what's going to walk in the door and what somebody's going to want you to do for them. But it's been fun for me working on it and it's been, sh it's been fun for me showing you. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, be sure and you know what to do. Hit the like, subscribe, and notifications. As always, thanks for watching and until next time, tip along.